Hi, Jim Gore from Thor Wealth Management. There's something that I've been concerned about a number of years, and that is the size of investment companies and their undue influence in voting shares for companies. And let me, let's look at another Avenger, which is Spider-Man, better known as the Peter Parker principle. With great power comes res great responsibility. And these companies are given great responsibility because when you buy their ETFs or put your money in their index funds, they get to vote those shares for those companies. And something has changed here in the last couple of months that I think is changes the whole uh, atmosphere for um, uh, you know directors within companies and how they're going to be governed. First of all, let's look at the big three, Vanguard, BlackRock, and State Street, and see how much influence they have. First of all, just those three companies, the assets under management is equivalent to 82% of the market capitalization of the S&P 500. So it's significant dollar amounts that they control and that they vote those shares. As a matter of fact, in the S&P 500, they voted for 25% of the director seats of all the shares that were voted 25% of them just came from those three companies. They have over 70% of the global ETF assets under management. So their assets under management in the ETF space is huge. And when you buy those ETFs, they buy the stocks, they get to vote those shares. Um, and just looking at BlackRock, one of them, BlackRock right now owns 5% or more of 97.5% of the companies in the S&P 500. So just think of that. They're a major shareholder and they get to have greater influence in voting for these corporations. And it hasn't been a problem until I, just what we've seen recently, which gives us some concerns going forward for voting and for corporate governance. What happened was with Exxon, there's a small, very small uh, hedge fund out there called Engine Number no. 1. They own 0.02% of the shares outstanding at Exxon. So we're talking a minuscule amount, but they put on some activist um, investors or, or uh, nominations for directors, right? And what they want to do with these directors is oversee and you know and oversee an energy transition strategy to transition Exxon to a renewable energy company. So that's like you know, taking a chicken company like Sanderson's Farm, just because I don't like eating meat, I'm gonna change them instead of being farming and raising chickens to raising corn, because I think people should be vegetarians. I have no problem with company, with people not investing in fossil fuel industries or other industries, you know, like defense industries, because they don't wanna be investing in those type of businesses. That's perfectly fine. These companies should set up their mutual funds so that they don't own these companies. But when they're trying to change the whole company and what they're doing, they're actually gonna hurt shareholder value. And that's something that's gonna be very important to see in the future. So BlackRock voted for three of the nominees that were directed, Vanguard and, and State Street voted for two of them. So it's gonna be very interesting to see what happens to Exxon. First of all, you have activists, people on there not to get better shareholder value, but to change the makeup of what Exxon does. And if Exxon shares do go down in value because they can't do that, they're changing their whole business, if you will, um, you know, there should be some ramifications for these three firms voting this way because they are destroying shareholder value. In my opinion, they have a fiduciary duty to do what's best for the shareholders to make money. This is probably not the case because there's other renewable country, companies out there that are doing things much better than Exxon. Exxon is a fossil fuel oil company. So with this, you know, we've seen a shift over in power. When I first got into business, the most powerful company out there was Goldman Sachs. Now, one of the most powerful, or I think the most powerful, is BlackRock. And with that, the, the chairman of BlackRock's investment team, Larry Fink, is probably the most powerful person right now today in finance, and a lot of people are not aware of that. And this is what BlackRock has. And BlackRock, because they are so big, and their influence in Washington, when the Federal Reserve last year went out and bought corporate bonds, right? They bought some in ETFs, and then they also hired BlackRock to manage money for them, to buy corporate bonds individually. So first thing they did was buy the ETFs of BlackRock. 
So that gave him more, here again, more influence, more control, more power to BlackRock buying, having them manage money for the Federal Reserve. Um, then lastly is with the Biden administration, I think this is really shows you how things have changed. We used to have Goldman Sachs people going into the Treasury Department. Actually, number two person is executive from BlackRock. But even more importantly, if you look at who they've hired for their National Economic Council, this is Biden's number one council to tell him economic policy. And the person that's heading that up is Brian Deese, and his role at, at BlackRock was sustainable investing. He was the one responsible for hiring and doing the sorts of things that they did with Exxon when bringing in these um, uh, directors. So this is something that all of us should be concerned about. Uh, they should be held accountable if Exxon doesn't do well in the future and their share price underperforms significantly. Um, Exxon or Vanguard, State Street, and BlackRock should be held accountable and there should be lawsuits against them for them breaking their fiduciary duty. Uh, but you as an investor should also know when you're investing in something, who you're giving your voting rights to. If you don't like the way that they vote for something like this in Exxon, either buy the companies outright in your own portfolio or go ahead and invest it with a company that's gonna be investing your portfolio in a way that you want them to invest and vote the way that they want you to invest. Um, we look forward to talking to you uh, again in two weeks. And if you have any questions or concerns about this topic, please reach out to us. It's something that I'm very concerned about because this power could change the makeup of companies for years in the future, and it may not be the best thing for shareholder value. Take care.